Okay, assalamu alaikum. Uh, please forgive me for how I'm looking. I am so tired. I have not slept all night. Um, the situation in Gambia and Lebanon is becoming very, very critical right now. It's becoming more critical than I can actually tell you all. What has happened is all weekend, I have not rested. We have hired lawyers who are ready in the Gambia. Nyungi am lawyer in Lebanon. Nyungi am lawyer in Gambia. So, Lihel, what has happened is that... The lawyer went to general security, went to social security to ensure that all the girls can go home and they don't have any records and fees. So today was Monday. Monday means that all of the flight operators are open. Our lawyer has been driving to each operator until literally three hours ago. We found flights from Lebanon to, Gam to, to Senegal, and we arranged from Senegal a bus to take the girls to the border of Gambia. From the border of Gambia, we have another bus that's going to take them into Gambia so I can pay for their hotels and they can be, they can actually um, have, be quarantined for 14 days. Everything was set. All we needed was Halid, the Gambian consulate, to actually confirm that the papers are done. Halid confirms that the papers, the emergency papers are done. But he's saying that, you, all these tickets you've booked, I've paid, I've almost paid 1.3 million Dalasi, which is 27,000 US dollars to, for, for all 36 tickets. Now, Halid is saying that only 28 of them can leave. And the Gambian government has told him that these girls cannot leave unless the Gambian government pay for them. But the Gambian government is not ready to pay 1.3 million Dalasi, are they? If we allow the Gambian government to say they're going to pay for this, it's going to take these girls another nine months before they even get to see their family. Four of the girls, their moms and their dads have died of heartache, of not seeing them. Some of these girls have not seen their parents for nine years. Many of these girls have been beaten and abused. And now, now that somebody like myself with my NGO is standing saying, I'm ready to pay for these 27,000 US dollars, the Gambian government, a.k.a. Seku Sise, a.k.a. Tangara, a.k.a. Baro, is saying that they are going to pay for, for, for these girls. But nobody except myself is ready with a bank card. It's sitting right here. My bank card is ready to pay for the tickets. We have reserved it. And if I don't pay for it by tomorrow, 9 a.m., the tickets will be gone. This is the only flight that all 36 girls and children can be in to travel together to Gambia because I don't want to pay for 15 and then there's another 15 left. I want all of them on the same flight to Senegal. I want all of them on the same bus to Gambia. I want all of them on the same bus into Gambia. I don't want the government to bloody refund me. I have wasted money on, on NGO and helping people. This is not the first time, guys. I put over 70,000 Swedish crowns of my money in the Libya initiative. I haven't gotten that back. I never asked for my money back. I don't want the damn money back. The government doesn't have to refund me. What they can do is, whatever much the flight costs, they can give it to the women when they arrive and they can start a new life. They can use that 1.3 million Dalasi too for initiatives for our youths to get jobs. I don't want that, but I want you all to understand now, you need to get up. In Gambia, I don't know if you're in Gambia, I don't know if, if you're in Lebanon, I don't know if you're in Sweden, but if you are Gambian, if you're a human being, if you have red blood running through your veins, understand what is happening. I have posted about this. Those are the reservations I have posted, the reservations I was supposed to pay for today so that tomorrow the girls can go and pick up their, their tickets. The tickets are ready. Both money is ready, tickets are ready, and the Gambian government is now saying, oh, don't allow Lovett to pay for it because we want to pay for it. For nine months, you've been able to pay for it. If you have had 1.3 million sekusise to pay for it, why haven't you damn done it yet? Why haven't you done it yet? Now we're in a critical, let me just explain, we're in a critical position. The girls in Lebanon are ready to burn down this consulate and I support them. If this doesn't happen, that consulate will come to the ground and Saudi can hold me accountable. I don't care. I'm worried about the Lebanese people in Gambia. Who now, if, this, if these girls don't come home Friday, on Friday, be prepared that Lebanese businesses in Gambia are going to suffer. We're not, we're not talking boycotting anymore. People are angry. Young people are angry. Everybody's angry. And I'm tired. I'm tired before be, be, beyond belief. 
Every single woman in Lebanon has packed their bags. I sent them money to buy their luggage and pack it. They are packed. They are ready. We have picked up the girls from the actual um, madame's uh, offices. Every single of these 36 girls is ready to go. They're ready to go. And the Gambian government is not allowing them to go. We have a flight ready for them, for all 36 of them, including two babies, for the fourth. That is on Friday next week. That means Friday, they will leave on the fourth. They will arrive on the fifth. It's an overnight flight. The, the money is right here. If you guys want me to screenshot my bank account and post it, I will. Our lawyer is asking Halid, Ahmad and Seku to leave them with their with all their papers so they can go. So this is where we are right now. And I'm getting really tired. I'm getting really frustrated by the Gambian government's inability to understand humanity. The Gambian government has promised to pay for these girls. Actually, a week ago, the Gambian government said the girls can pay for themselves. So I came up and I said, I will pay for their tickets. Now they're saying they are going to pay for it. With what money? The Gambia government wants to pay for the tickets when they have had nine months. A baby could have been conceived and born in that time. Nine months. So now the Gambian government is blocking me from using my money to pay for these women. Tell me, is that fair? Tell me if you're Gambian, I don't care if you're Bambara, if you're Sarahule, if you're Fulani, if you are a Sose, whatever you may be, the, all of these women in this group they are Sarahule, they are Pol, they are, they are uh, Bambara. Every, every tribe that is in Gambia is in these women. So don't some of you say, oh, if it was a Pol issue, we would stand up. Or if it's a Sosa issue, we will stand up. Look at their names. Look at their last names. They're, every single tribe in Gambia has people stuck in Lebanon today. So that should tell you, Gambia, I need you to stand up and protest. Otherwise, this government will take you for idiots. This government is taking you for idiots because even when Gambians of the diaspora want to pay, they are saying no, which means think clearly. What is the Gambian government gaining from these women staying there? I keep telling you, the Gambian government is pushing me to say things that I don't, I don't want to say, but they're making money out of these women being held in Lebanon. Because imagine if every single Gambian leaves Lebanon, how will Halid make money? What is his use in Lebanon anymore? There are many people who do not want these girls to come home. I need you if you're in the Gambia to stand up. I need you if you're in the Gambia to protest. I need you in the Gambia, whether you're gonna protest outside of the Lebanese embassy, which is on Kerba Avenue, or you're gonna go to Minister of Foreign Affairs and actually protest. I need you, if you're not in Gambia and you're in the diaspora, to please take this seriously. No one can say, it's not my problem because my children are not there, because you don't know where your children will end up at the end of the day. And many of you men who don't want to support us, you, a, a woman gave birth to you, carried you for six months, a black woman, and you want to be out here being rubbish, please think twice. When you, when you as a black Gambian man rubbish a black woman, you're rubbishing your mom. You're rubbishing where your mom gave back to you. That's what I'm saying. Do not sit here and blame left or right. We just want this to be done so I can go and actually sleep and rest. Look at my face. I'm fucking tired, man. I just want these girls to come home. I'm not asking any of you for $1. The money is sitting here in my bank card. Please. Put on your shoes and take back your power. Because I'm very scared for the Lebanese in Gambia if these women don't come home on the 4th. I'm very scared for Khalid. What will happen to him if these girls don't come? Because right now, at this point in critical time, nobody can stop any Gambian person in Lebanon from destroying property or stabbing somebody. And if I was there, I would have stabbed somebody by now. Trust me. If you're in the Gambia, look at where you're spending the money with Lebanese companies that right now are not saying anything about your women. I want the girls to get their papers and come home on Friday. That is on the 4th of September. We have found a flight. We're willing to pay for it. The money's standing ready. And the Gambian government has now decided today, today, 
that they're not going to do anything. The girls are not coming home. We need them to come home. The Gambian government is the only obstacle standing in the way of our lawyers and our people. They are lying because these girls have waited there for nine months already. So if the Gambian government was to bring them back, they would have brought them back and not be panicking now that I've been involved for almost two weeks. Now we see movement from the Gambian government. Now we see movement. So open your eyes and really think, who are you voting for? Who is in power? What are they doing? Komli mawahla. Ken si yendu muna wahne sen li munta dal sendom. Sendom muna nyo fi Sweden sa. Mu am problem. So so neke yai nga plan pur am dom. Think about it. Think about it. Don't think that this is them. It's not my problem. This is everybody's problem. I don't care if you're Lebanese or black or white or brown. This is everybody's problem. I'm sitting here ready to pay for the tickets and they're going to allow me to pay for tickets and then keep the girls anyway, which means I will be minus 1.3 million dalasi. Please, Binta, keep it up. It's not helping me right now. I need you to keep it up. Bulenko, Texas, Moko. You too keep it up. You too go and call Halik. You too go and call Seko. Seko nge doh Gambia. Yen you see him. Hold him accountable. He said last week the girls are coming home. Today he's not allowing me to pay for the tickets. Is it his money? Does he want me to give him that money? What is the problem? Think really carefully guys. I gotta go because I need to literally wash my face. How can we help? Protest in Gambia. Protest whatever country you're in. Contact Seiko Sise. Contact Khalid. You have all the details on my page. Please do something. Our people, our black women are suffering. And this pisses me off. Because whenever the issue is about black women, everybody sits back and holds their hands. Because nobody gives a shit about black women. You don't care. You don't care if, you're, if, you're, if it's your mum or, or your sister. You don't care. Nobody cares about black women. That's why I'm telling you black women all internationally, please stand up. Our black brothers stand up because today is us. Tomorrow you will expect us to fight for you. How can we fight for you if we're not even alive? Come on, it's time to protest. Get angry. Get really damn angry because now is the critical moment.